My name is Mark Heiser Wieringa. I'm a, uh, a lawyer in Edmonton here. I work with Alberta Justice as a Crown Prosecutor and has, have for several decades. And I have a genetic eye disease, a uh, rare genetic eye disease called choroideremia that uh, leads to progressive vision loss and uh, blindness. That causes a lot of suffering, really. It's tough for the individual, it's tough for their family, it's tough for their uh, friends to see somebody uh, or to experience over, slowly over time uh, the loss of vision. This is a genetic disorder, and we, under, we fully understand the genetics of it. So I've got three beautiful daughters. They've, uh, they are all carriers of this gene defect. And so when they, if they have children, uh, they, there's a 50-50 chance that if they have males, that they will be like their dad. If they have uh, female f f daughters, there's again a 50-50 chance that their daughters will be carriers like they are. So that's a heavy burden on um, you know, young uh, young women. The probability in my own situation with uh, uh, three daughters, we have a son as well, but so he's home free, but three daughters is that this is this problem challenge is going to reappear down the uh, uh, you know uh, generational line for sure. I think that's what makes it psychologically uh, so difficult and uh, challenging. So it does uh, you know a retinal degenerative condition, and this one you know my experience causes uh, considerable yeah suffering and uh, hardship in the mid. Uh, 90s. Uh, Debbie, my wife, determined that uh, they had a uh, ophthalmologist here at the University of Alberta who, astonishingly enough, his research interest, significant, most significant research interest, was choroideremia, which was at a time when, in my experience, uh, you know, and I might be somewhat off on this, but most ophthalmologists wouldn't even be have been familiar if you would have said choroideremia, they wouldn't know anything about it basically, and you know, the rare ophthalmologists might. But so it was quite astonishing to hey, right here in our backyard is a guy whose main, uh, you know, acad an academic physician whose main research interest is uh, choroideremia. I'm Ian McDonald. I'm a professor and chair of the Department of Ophthalmology, University of Alberta. I'm a clinician scientist. I trained as a clinical geneticist and then became an ophthalmologist, and I've been working on this research for about 30 years. What I'm trying to accomplish personally is to enable access to patients with heritable eye diseases to future treatments. And gene therapy is on the horizon. It's very much topical. And we have the opportunity here in Alberta to create a, a center for ocular gene therapy, something that will be a first in Canada. And uh, for me, it's a wonderful experience to be able to link patients who have been expectantly waiting for something like this to happen. They've heard about it. And now here's the opportunity to actually link patients with heritable ocular diseases for which they've known no treatment to actually a, an experimental treatment, albeit, but a treatment that may prevent their vision loss. So the clinical trial that we're embarking on is what we call a phase one trial. It's Phase one means safety, but in the process of doing this trial, we'll get important information on how to deliver a gene to the eye and have it taken up by the eye and used as the normal copy. We'll learn about the safety of our surgical uh, abilities. We'll learn about uh, the manufacturing process, where the, we can actually bring that into Alberta so we can make this gene replacement here in Alberta. We'll learn about how to use the sophisticated imaging equipment and uh, our personnel to find out how our effects of the gene replacement work on the human body to improve visual function and perhaps very much key to all of this will be training the next generation of young researchers, um, both basic scientists and clinicians, to actually undertake some of this work for the future. This will be the first clinical trial on ocular gene therapy in Canada, uh, and others will follow, and I'm certain that other centers in Canada will probably follow our lead and want to very much do this. For Health Canada, this will be a first. This will be a first application in Canada to them to actually enable us to do gene therapy in the eye in Canada. So Tanya has a wealth of experience in regulatory affairs. She's an expert in law. She's an, uh, she has uh, many uh, understandings of health law and health policy. She's a geneticist by training. And so there's that commonality of understanding of how do you move therapies um, that are genetically based 
into uh, common practice. I'm Dr. Tanya Bubala. I am an associate professor in the School of Public Health at the University of Alberta. Because of the amount of monitoring and follow-up that's going to be required, it's going to be that the, the initial trial participants are going to be incredibly generous. Um, first of all, they are um, they're, they're trialing an experimental, um, uh, experimental intervention. Um, but second of all, it, this is going to require many years of follow-up and many years of research. And so it's a significant time commitment for the participants to come and have a lot of, not particularly invasive, but you know, still procedures, medical procedures, lots of visits, um, lots of follow-up to make sure that everything's going well, and also from a research perspective to see what's happening. And so being able to draw from a local population just makes all of that much simpler. When you're bringing new technologies into the clinic, it's not just about the science. It's also about society. It's about um, clinical adoption, clinical practices, um, overcoming legal and regulatory hurdles, considering um, the ethical challenges, the risk factors, considering the, the design of the, of the clinical trial and the, and the working with the participants. And most importantly, any kind of research with, uh, with people requires um, a very rigorous consent process. So for patients or to, to become participants in a clinical trial, they need to be made very well aware of the risks as well as the potential outcomes and what the trial is really about. Well, my hope is that the trial goes well and I have some hope that it will be proven efficacious that we can move forward with, uh, with gene therapy for uh, rare hereditary eye diseases. I mean, so personally my hope is that, uh, you know, and I hardly dare to go there, but uh, I do let myself go there once in a while, I guess, and think about it by myself, uh, almost fantasizing about it, is uh, having my vision, you know, that sort of uh, trajectory reverse itself. That is that my vision, you know, is gonna, could improve which for me is a huge, uh, you know, sort of paradigm shift. Uh, and as I said before, if I could regain just even some, you know, uh, some of the, the recent vision that I've lost and uh, regain the ability to do those things such as, uh, you know, read uh, ordinary newsprint, uh, magazine, uh, newspaper, whatever, uh, you know, a book actually, back to holding a book and reading a book and uh, on my own, are, you know, uh, cycling, are uh, navigating the world a little more uh, efficiently and easily. It would just be such a fantastic uh, um, improvement, I guess, or change.